What's up YouTube? Want to make a video review on a new product I just bought. Now it's an Alienware Alpha. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh shit, an Alienware. You know, noob, waste of money. And uh, I've done a video on this before when I got my wife her R4 ALX. And uh, I ended up getting that for a steal. But that's a whole nother story and you can check out that video. There goes my dog. Hey, get away from my shoes. I just got home from work so they're interested in my shoes. Um, but anyways, I ended up picking up an Alienware Alpha, and I got this on a, at a reasonable price, really. Uh, I paid about $800 Canadian for it. It is the i5 model with the one terabyte hard drive and uh, eight gigs of RAM. So that's roughly a $1,000 model, and I got about $200 off, and I did that by going to uh, Best Buy. They recently bought out Future Shop. And so they no longer carry Alienware products, and so they took all the store models uh, and basically put them as open boxes and sold them. So I ended up buying a brand new Alpha, but at an open box price. Even though it was never sold, never even hooked up, it was just the display model. Um, so yeah, the moral, or the whole reason I picked up this... Uh, this mini computer is I wanted to replace the media center in my uh, living room in my entertainment console And that was a small mini Acer tower, which was still roughly You know like that so it took up a decent amount of space and uh, Didn't really look too good. I wanted to move it upstairs and, and get something a little bit more uh, Streamlined it would fit into my uh, my entertainment center So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like now and we'll go ahead and talk about the alpha and here we are in front of our entertainment center in my living room and starting from right to left, you know, we have our, uh, all of our DVDs and stuff. There's a 360, a Wii U, all of our Walking Dead uh, collector stuff. There's a PS4, my receiver, digital cable box, Xbox One, and right over there is the Alpha. Now my old tower used to sit on top of my sub right there in the corner, if this would focus. There we go. Used to sit right over there, so it's kind of like... Uh, I, it's out of the way, but still sort of in the area. And, and not tucked in on a shelf like the Alpha is. And then, you know, some Hot Toys figures and uh, Frostmourne up on the wall over there. If you can see that. Without the glare. There we go. A little bit better. So, as you can see, the Alpha is sitting right there, blends in really nice. It is so much smaller than all the other consoles. And that's what I like most about it, is its size. Now if we come in a little bit closer here, give you an example, there's the Xbox, or the, sorry, the, yep, the Xbox One, there's the Alpha. Here's my hand. Gives you a pretty good idea of the difference in size. And the best part is, is that this will walk all over the other two modern consoles. Uh, Basically, it's an i5 4590T, a version of a GTX 860M. It's not actually an 860M, it's just a slightly higher clocked uh, card based on the same sort of architecture because this is a one-off PCB or uh, motherboard and the way it's all designed is, you know, it has sort of like a laptop video card that you can't really change but it also has a regular um, socket for a CPU. So you can open it up and change if you got the base model, the i3, you could put in an i5 or you could even put in an i7. Uh, it just, it's whatever you want. You can upgrade the RAM, you can change the hard drive. The only thing you can't change is the video card due to how it's built into the system. But I mean, I had extra parts upstairs that I wanted to use and build like a, a pretty beefy media center that I could actually play my games with, bring my Steam library down to my living room because my main computer is upstairs and it's nice to actually play Steam games in my living room. Uh, so with this, I am able to do that. And the resolution in which my TV is, this is a 60 inch uh, LED Sharp Aquos and its refresh rate is uh, 120 Hertz. Uh, full HD, yada, 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 1080p television. Uh, but for the most part, I use my projector, which is, oh, you can hear my dog. What is it, Ollie? You want to go outside? No? 
Uh, I used my projector here, which is 720p or 1280 by 800 at 60 hertz, 1920 by 1080 at 26 hertz in full 3D. So for the most part, I just watch movies or game in uh, 720p, right? Because that's what I use for the most part. And that is a BenQ MW519 right up there. Now, because of that, you don't need a lot of power to drive a 720p game. So the alpha there gets pretty much 60 FPS all the time at very high to ultra settings and almost all games. Like I play The Witcher 3 at, you know, 1280 by 720, everything max except for hair effects, I leave that off, and it runs just fine, 30s, 40s frame per second, uh, which is really good. A lot better than the console versions, which run at medium settings. Olive, that's enough. Be quiet. Thank you. So yeah, in terms of uh, competing with consoles, this is a far beefier option. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna turn the system on, show you the interfaces, how it works. I'm gonna film with the, uh, the TV instead of with the projector, just because it's daytime and it'll be a lot easier to see this screen rather than the projector. Uh, and it'll transfer onto camera a lot better because the projector is DLP, so you get a lot of uh, red, green, blue going across the screen when you try to record it. Let's go ahead and turn on. I'll show you all the different ways that you can use the Alienware Alpha. All right, so here we are. First way that you can use your Alpha is a completely normal desktop, which is exactly what it is. It's just a, a desktop computer. So here we have, uh, you know, all your normal stuff. Steam's right here. You got the internet, uh, Internet Explorer, all that stuff. It's, it's more or less a computer, which is exactly what my media center was too. And how I use it, uh, the Alpha as a media center, is with a program called Kodi, which is uh, based off XBMC. So here's how I stream media with the uh, Alpha. So this is a program called Kodi, and what it is is basically a very picky search engine. And you get all these different types of apps, uh, like Genesis or One Channel, and what you do with that is you use it to Search for media. Um, let's go to most popular TV shows. So what it's going to do, it's going to search for the highest quality streams of each of these shows. So we'll go to uh, here, uh, Orange is the New Black. So it's going to find all the seasons. It's going to give me thumbnails on a background. Every episode. And then when you pick your episode, get down from there, please. Hey, come on, down. It'll find all the different uh, hosting sites. So GB Center, blah, 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 blah. And it's all in HD or high quality. Down, please. Come on, let's go. Get down, Olive. The dog's on the couch. And there, so it'll just automatically start streaming. You can pause, skip forward, go back, yada, yada, yada. Well, we should get out of that before <laughs> before I get flagged. Didn't expect that. Anyways, um, so yeah, that's how you use it as a media center. You can also use it as a regular PC. I mean, it's that's what it is. So we can open up this demo here of uh, FaceWorks for NVIDIA. And what that's going to do is basically run a program just like a normal desktop will. And remember, this is pretty much a console. That's what it's aimed to be. It's aimed to be a Steam box. So... <laughs> Again, not only, for example, Xbox One and PS4 are about $400, $450 here in Canada. Um, when you buy that, all you get is a console. Starting price for the Alpha is about 500 bucks. And when you buy that, you get a computer, you get a media center, you get a console, you get a Steam box. Like, there's, it does so much more. So here we are looking at this uh, demo, just basically showing you a realistic face with NVIDIA's... Uh, graphics so pretty impressive looking graphics too I mean I don't know how well you can see it but uh, all this is being generated real time by the alpha so I can move around look around him I think he looks at the mouth sometimes maybe he's got a zit on his forehead right there you see yeah there it is so again that's that's pretty cool and pretty impressive it actually is really neat. 
So there you go. I mean, it operates like a computer. You could even play WoW on it if you wanted. So let's go ahead and get out of this. However you do that. Escape, I guess. And now I'm going to show you how you would use it as a console. Now here's the best part. So you're in your, your uh, desktop here. And say you want to go to the console. Well, you just click on this. Run it because that's what Windows 8 does all the fucking time. Accidentally clicked that uh, thing there to bring up my resolution. To launch HiveMind, press OK to restart. So now it's going to restart it in console mode. And I'll show you that as soon as we get back. Another cool thing with the Alienware is that it actually came with a wireless Xbox 360 controller. Now the earlier models, which is what these are, uh, come with the 360 controller. However, later on, since this is technically a Steam box, they will ship with the Steam uh, controller. It's just not finished yet and Alienware wanted to get a piece of the market, or sorry, Dell wanted to get a piece of the market. Uh, early on, they didn't want to release in uh, holiday season. So that's pretty cool. It comes with a dongle that attaches to the back that allows you to use this. And you can, uh, pretty sure, turn on the system with it. Or not. And so, once you get into console mode, screen boots up like this. Now, every time you turn on the system, it'll automatically boot into console mode. And then from there, you can go to your desktop. And to do that, it doesn't require a restart. To go into the console mode, it does require a restart. So this is the, the, the screen you see every time you turn on the console from completely powered off. So, again, there you go, wireless 360 controllers hooked up there, perfect. We'll just go ahead and wait for this to load. Now this does ship with a one terabyte laptop style hard drive. And it's a 5400 RPM drive, so it's actually really slow. Um, well, there we go, anyways. Uh, but you can upgrade to an SSD. Uh, it allows you to back up the entire operating system onto a thumb drive, take out the hard drive in there, put in the SSD, boot it up, boot it from the thumb drive, and you're good to go. So this is the console UI that you get. So here we go. We're controlling everything with the wireless controller. You can also control it with the keyboard and mouse, as you'll see here. And start moving a mouse, and then you can operate it like that. Arrow keys. You know, it's it's anytime you want, you can switch between the two. So, basically what we have here, if we uh, go into settings, if this looks familiar to you at all, it's because it's based off of XBMC, which is awesome. So, if we go into, let's say, uh, device settings, and then go down to... Uh, Basically, it shows you all the information about the console, but I want to go down to Alien FX so I can show you something real cool. So here we are. If you look down there, the console's pink right now because my wife's Alienware upstairs is pink and because I don't have a choice, this is pink too. Um, but if you go on the screen here, you can see all the different uh, colors here. And what you can do with that is just change the color of anything. So there we got yellow, then we're getting into green, some blues. It's hard to see. I'll go up closer. So you can more or less pick what color you want it to be for both zones. So if you look here, you can change that little ring on the side there. You can see the reflection of it changing. So you can customize how it looks too, which is pretty cool. Much like any other Alienware that you can buy. So that's neat. You can do that. Can't do that with the consoles. And the best part is when you hook up a PlayStation 4 controller to it instead of an Xbox controller, you can <laughs> you can change the color on the back of the PS4 controller to match the system, which is really cool. So you got all your uh, system options there, pictures, programs, blah, blah, blah. You can actually run XBMC, like all your uh, programs and add-ons like I showed you before, through this and never have to leave it uh, to go to the desktop and then open it from there. I just run it through the desktop because it's just easier for me. Um... So here's games. Now this is where it comes into its own and more or less becomes a console or a Steam box. So we're going to launch Steam with it. And that's going to log me into my Steam account. And from there, we can boot up any of the games that I have installed on it.
So here is the Steam UI. You have your all your information up top, all the downloads, uh, messages. I have a lot of messages. You can go to the store, and it's all very, very intuitive, easy to use. Go through all the games, top sellers, genres, blah, 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 blah. You know, and there's thousands and thousands of games on Steam. So the library is huge. So here's my personal library. We'll go down to uh, all my games. Those are all the installed games. We'll go to all games, so there's 98 here. You know, and you just scroll through, find you want, find the one you want. What the fuck is this? Depth. Sure, I guess I got that for free. Um, find a game you want to play, click on it, play it. So we'll go here to everything that I got installed. Uh, let's just pick something. Here we'll do... Uh, load up project cars. So you click on that, and away she goes. There we go. You can see my mouse there because this is a game designed for keyboard, mouse, steering wheel, stuff like that. It's not native to the controller, but it works. Let's move this out of the way. There you go. Actually, I have quite a few videos on Project Cars with my Oculus Rift and Sim setup. If you want to check those out. So again, we'll go over to. Uh... Settings here. Visual. Everything's on. Go to performance. So I'm running at 720p because that's what I play at on my uh, other screen. Windowed, no. Texture resolution, high. V-Sync, no. Anti-aliasing is high. SMAA is high. Everything, ultra, 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 high, high. Motion blur is low. Uh, detailed grass, you don't really need, but everything else is as high as it goes. Oh, particle density, ultra. We'll do that. We'll leave low detailed grass. So much higher settings than you would get on the console counterpart. So let's go ahead and get out of here. We'll go to free practice, pick a car. Beginning wire. We'll load it up and I'll let you take a look and see how it looks on PC. Technically it's my living room console. It sits right there next to the others. Whenever I want to play a PC game, I don't have to go upstairs anymore. Just turn this on. Go, go, go! up a bit, get a little bit less screen door effect. Just a gorgeous looking game too. I'm watching the camera and then the TV and I'm screwing up.
So the moral of the story is... It's a PC. It's a media center. It's a Steam box. It's a console. It is everything I want a living room based PC to be. It's super small, super powerful for what it is compared to the Xbox One or the PS4 or the Wii U up there. It does everything you need. Think about it this way. Let's say you want a console. You buy a PS4, you spend 400 bucks on it after tax, 450, whatever it is. At the end of the day, all you have is that PlayStation 4. All you have is a console that can only play games made for it. Same with the Xbox. If you wanted to buy that console and then buy a media center for your living room, let's say a couple hundred bucks for a small, decent tower that can do everything you want and stream in HD, that's already $700, almost, 650 bucks that you spent. Let's say that not only that you want that media center, that you want to play Steam games in your living room too. Well, fuck, now you got to build a computer or buy a computer that can do that as well. And then hook that up and who knows what you're going to spend on that. For the resolution of televisions mostly being 1080p, 720p is, is pretty livable. It looks just fine. For what you want for your living room if you want to game at higher resolutions you have a computer you're gonna do it there 1440p uh, you know uh, 4k whatever it is you can do that you'll have your computer if you want to do that but if you're a console gamer that wants to get into PC gaming as well or a PC gamer that you know wants to have something a little bit more portable this is a great alternative because for an entry-level alpha you're paying about 500 bucks you're going to spend way more to get everything that you want individually that this thing does on its own. It's small, it's powerful, does everything I want it to do, is above and beyond the media center replacement I was originally after. And now I have all my Steam games in my living room. I also have my media center that's sitting right there too. That's the exact same thing that I can control with this. If I wanted to download a, an emulator and play N64 games in my living room again, or Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis, whatever it is, I can do that with that console, with the Alpha. I can't do that with the Xbox One or the PS4. I can't turn it on and stream HD movies from or TV shows for free from anywhere in the world. No, I gotta use something else. So, all in all, for what I wanted, the Alienware Alpha is amazing. It is everything that you could want out of a tiny little package. It's a console, it's a PC gaming machine, it's a, a Steam box, it's a media center, it's a regular PC that you can browse the web and watch YouTube and do whatever you want from in the comfort of your living room. i 100% happy with my purchase and I would highly recommend it to anybody. So, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video be sure to subscribe leave a like helps me out a lot and i look forward to seeing you guys in the next video peace